Hello again, my fabulous second, third graders of Seattle Public Schools. Let's get ready for our making meaning today. We are going to be rereading re parts of the birthday swap. Remember, when we reread, it helps us go deeper into a text and practice a strategy. We are going to be practicing using visualizing to help us understand and connect with the main character's feeling. As with all of our reading lessons, it is important that you grab a talk partner in order to make sure you are explaining and understanding our strategy very clearly. I'm going to give you a minute to do that now. Go get your partner. All right, scholars, now that we're really ready and settled in, we're going to get our brains going. I want to review and remember what we read in the book, The Birthday Swap, yesterday in our last lesson. Think, what do you remember about the story, The Birthday Swap? I'm gonna give us all a little extra time to think because it's a long story. Go ahead and share with your partner now. I brought Wags up here for this one because he loves this story. Wags shared with me that he remembered it was Lori's sister Cookie's birthday and Lori wanted to get Cookie her own present, but she couldn't find the perfect thing for her. And she was running out on errands with her mom. The day of her sister Cookie's birthday, and she arrives and she doesn't have a gift for her. Is that, am I saying this right? Okay. And then, this is the part that Wags loves the most and why he probably loves this book. Turns out the party is actually for Lori because Cookie swapped or switched her birthday with Lori so that she could enjoy a summer birthday with a family. And I know, Wags loves this part. She gets what she was wanting more than anything in the world, a puppy. All right, thanks Wags. <laughs> Scholars, now that we've refreshed our mind about the story, I want to, you to watch as I show you how I visualize in a certain part of the story and then think about how that might make, what's happening might make the character feel. Just like we did in last week's lessons, when I read today, I'm gonna read each part two times to really help the person visualize. It was a Saturday morning in the summer, the day before my sister Cookie's birthday. Every year, we celebrated Cookie's birthday with a big family reunion and cookout at Tio Daniel's house in Mexico. This year, I wanted to get Cookie my own present instead of just adding my name to whatever my parents were giving her. But I couldn't come up with an idea for a gift. When I told my mom, she smiled and said, she doesn't expect you to give her a present, Miha. But I want to, I said. Only she's so much older than me, it's hard to find the right thing. Well, think. Dad said. I'm going to read it one more time. It was Saturday morning in summer, the day before my sister Cookie's birthday. Every year we celebrated Cookie's birthday with a big family reunion and cookout at Tio Daniel's house in Mexico. This year I wanted to get Cookie my own present instead of just adding my name to whatever my parents were giving her, but I couldn't come up with an idea for a gift. When I told my mom, she smiled and said, she doesn't expect you to give her a gift, Miha, but I want to. I said, only she's so much older than me, it's hard to find the right thing. Well, think, Dad said. When I read this part of the story, I picture Lori in her kitchen, maybe her hands resting on her cheek as she's thinking really hard about a present that she could get her older sister, uh, Cookie. I think Lori is feeling puzzled, 
because it says that she wants to get her sister a present, but she's so much older than Lori, it's hard to find the right thing. All right, scholars, now it's your turn to try it with me. Um, we have a couple new sentence stems today. Some of them should look somewhat familiar, and some of them will be new. All right. I pictured blank. Try that with me. I pictured blank. You probably heard me say that when I was sharing my thinking. Or you could use I imagined blank. Try that with me. I imagined blank. Then we're going to add on I think blank is feeling blank. Try that with me. I think blank is feeling blank. And if you want to go for that challenge and be that rock star, you'll say, I think this because blank. Try that with me now. I think this because blank. Great. You are ready to share your thinking when it comes time. I'm going to read this next part of the story two times. Close your eyes. Get your imagination working as I read. Mom headed straight for the fruit and vegetable stands. I saw a huge bin of shiny red tomatoes. Cookie loves tomatoes. I thought, I picked one up. Somehow a tomato just wasn't special enough. What do you think? I asked a kitten at my feet. Meow, it meowed in a tiny voice. Okay, just as a reminder, they're at the market. I'll read it one more time. Mom headed straight for the fruit and vegetable stands. I saw a huge bin of shiny red tomatoes. Cookie loves tomatoes, I thought. I picked one up. Somehow a tomato just wasn't special enough. What do you think? I asked a kitten at my feet. Meow, it meowed in a tiny voice. What did you, what did you see in your mind as you listened? to this part of the story. Love seeing your brains thinking hard. Go ahead and turn to your partner now. I was sharing with my friends here that I imagine Lori walking into a very noisy and crowded market. There's a lot of smells, the fruits and vegetables and the animals. And I picture her finding a perfectly round, red, ripe, juicy tomato and the softness of it as she's thinking if it's the right gift for her sister. Scholars, next step. How do you think Lori is feeling in this part of the story? Go ahead and turn to your partner now. Wags also loves this part, but for a different reason than the puppy part. He loves it because of the cat. He said he thinks Lori might be feeling conflicted about getting the tomato as a gift since she asks the little kitten at her feet what it thinks about the tomato as a gift. Now, maybe you thought of some other feeling words too, and that's great. Characters often have several feelings that could be used to describe them. Just make sure that, like WAGS, you use the text to support your thinking. All right, let's try another one together from another part in the story. Okay. Our church was in Mexico, so the whole service was in Spanish. 
Usually, I like to sit quietly and just look around at the paintings and stained glass. But that day, all I could do was fidget. When I saw my brothers leave early, I wanted to go with them, but Cookie whispered that they had to pick up something and they'd meet us later. Here we go one more time. See if you find, listen and hear something you missed the first time I read it. Our church was in Mexico, so the whole service was in Spanish. Usually, I like to sit quietly and just look around at the paintings and the stained glass. But that day, all I could do was fidget. When I saw my brothers leave early, I wanted to go with them. But Cookie whispered that they had to pick up something and they'd meet us later. All right, scholars. What did you see in your mind as you listened to this part? Go ahead and share with your partner now. Perhaps you and your partner were talking about how Lori was moving around a lot in her seat when she was fidgeting during the church service and how the rest of the room was probably really quiet listening to the service. Next part. How do you think Lori is feeling in this part? How would you feel if you were Lori? Turn to your partner now. Scholars, I think that Lori is probably feeling anxious because she doesn't have a gift yet for her sister. I think this because it says she's fidgeting in her seat when she's normally very quiet looking at things around the church. Great practice today, scholars. Remember, visualizing is a strategy that helps us understand and enjoy what we read. How did visualizing parts of the birthday swap help you understand or enjoy the story? For example, I really enjoyed visualizing parts of this story because it helps me think deeper about the main character, Lori, and how her feelings really change as the story goes on. It's almost time for you to practice our strategy on your own. And today, we're going to grow our reading and our writing brain during IDR. As you read your Just Write books, I want you to use Post-its or scrap paper to mark the places you have strong mental images. In my book, I used scrap paper to mark the places that I have been um, making visualizations. And then you can go back to those pages when you're done reading and share them with a partner. And then you have those marked also to help you so you can write. I've been reading Those Shoes by Mary Beth Boltz. And I will show you now what you can do. I put a post-it note on the page that says, we shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. So background is that Jeremy has a pair of the high top shoes now, but he notices that Antonio's shoes are falling apart. And, he, and the shoe high tops that um, Jeremy has don't quite fit him. Okay, So I made my mark, and now I'm going to share my thinking and then write that. And um, you will notice, as I'm sharing my thinking, that there's an example of 
the sentence stems for a really strong journal entry. So when I wrote, I wrote, this book is Those Shoes by Mary Beth Bolts. In this part, Jeremy is playing basketball with his friend Antonio, and Antonio's shoes are ripped. So Jeremy is thinking about possibly giving him the high tops that are too small for him to Antonio, but he's not quite sure. I imagine him constantly looking at his friend Antonio and then saying, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. And then playing with him some more and his conscience, his, his heart is telling him maybe he should do it, but he doesn't know. I think he is feeling very conflicted. The words that helped me with that is because I think this because I'm not going to do it, is what he keeps saying in his mind and then even out loud. Okay? And that, that last bit is the I think this because is your challenge to add that on. Okay. All right, scholars, before we go, we're going to do a little bit of my favorite thing, which is vocabulary. Now, in my class, when we do vocabulary, I teach some words and then and you can do this too now, and you can tell your friends that they can do this as well. When you hear the word used again, you put your hands on your head. That clues your brain in that you are using that new vocabulary and noticing it in different parts of your life. All right. So the first word we have today is swap. Say swap. Don't you love the way that sounds when you say it? To swap means to switch. In the book, Lori gets to swap her birthday for cookies, and in our picture, we have two kids swapping or switching books. People often like to swap or switch things, especially if they want something new or different from normal. For example, I might like to swap a plain pencil for a mechanical pencil because it makes writing exciting when you have a special pencil. Or, like these kids, I might swap books if I have already read the other books many times and I want to get a new adventure going. Scholars, what things might you swap? Why might you swap them? When you share with your partner, you're going to use this sentence stem. I would like to swap blank for blank because blank. Try that with me now. I would like to swap blank for blank, because blank. Think. Share what you'd like to swap with your partner now. Awesome. Scholars, the other word we're going to explore today is fidget. Say fidget. Wow, I chose great words that sound fun on your mouth. No, I don't mean fidget spinners, but they do give us an idea about the meaning of fidget. Fidget means to make small movements repeatedly. So a fidget spinner lets you make repeated small movements with your hands. In our picture we had up, the pencil was being tapped many times. I am going, oh, before that, in the book, we had Lori fidgeting when she was at church. She wasn't able to sit still. Oftentimes when you're trying to focus or you're distracted or you just need to move, you fidget to get your body staying focused on what you want or trying to stay focused. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate what I have my kids do for fidgeting when we're in the classroom, if, they're, if we're in writing and they're trying to come up with ideas, I tell them, and a couple other teachers have this too, um, that they have the kids do, to fidget so we know that they're still thinking, but it helps them focus. Scholars, what did you see me do when I fidget? That's right, twiddling my thumbs. So. I want you to think about other ways that you could fidget, and I want you to try them now. Maybe you wiggle your fingers, maybe you tap your toes, or bounce lightly in your seat, twirling your hair. 
You could even do one of those in the room with a family member later and then see if they know what you're doing and you could teach them the cool new vocabulary word you learned, fidget. All right, scholars, now it's your turn to go off on your own and keep learning. Enjoy your books and I will see you for our next lesson. <laughs>